Hey, Reburn Deli friends. Um, I hope this is going to work. I have tried going live before and it's not worked. So I'm sorry. I'm going to move, be moving you around for a little bit. Don't get ill. <laughs> well, there we go. And look at my beautiful light in front of you. Let's see if we can move this light. <laughs> move it over here a little bit. <gasps> Fantastic. Hi, Dolly friends. I really hope this is working because... I've tried this before and it hasn't worked. So <laughs> here I am today. Um, normally I have a really hard time talking and painting. Um, I really struggle with things to talk about. But today I've got a cheat sheet right here and I've got some really important and interesting things to talk about. So first of all, let's talk about who and what I'm painting today. I'm painting a couple of cuddle babies. One is a custom and one um, is available. And I'm painting um, It's a Girl by Tina Kiwi. This is the custom. And I believe this is Emily by Linda Murray. They're both actually really big. And I started them at the same time. This is going to be um, an ethnic baby. And this one's going to be a Caucasian baby. And they're actually the same point in the process. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to talk about um you know, how you paint the different ethnicities, or at least how I paint the different eth eth ethnicities. And hopefully you can get an idea how they are changing as they go along. So these um, two vinyls started off very, very similar in color. If you look at the flange, this part, you can see that they're very similar in color. Um, but this one started out um, I actually neutralized it. It was quite an orange vinyl, so I neutralized it using this. This is my favorite neutralizer, Authentic Reborn um, Orange Remover. Um, that's like a green color. So I used that to neutralize it down. Um, and then the next thing that I paint is um, the creases. So... I painted the creases and in a Caucasian doll, I don't paint them particularly aggressively. Um, I put a little bit of shading inside the ear canal, um, a little bit around, you know, the inner parts of the ear, the wrinkles down here. I outline the lips. Um, I put some color in the nose. I go around the lips. Um, and then this baby has also had a layer of flesh. So my standard flesh color is this. I know it looks a little bit darker, um, but um, darker than like baby skin. Now, this little one, I did not neutralize because I knew she was going to be um, an ethnic baby. So I wanted to keep that orange in her skin. So no neutralizing for this one. When I um, did her creasing, I was quite a bit more, um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, aggressive with the creasing. You can probably kind of tell that I really did that hole inside of her ear. I did the lips much darker. Um, and just everything, just darker, more paint, um, because I know I'm going to be adding so much color on top. Um, and then she has had four flesh layers. So she's had two, what I call milk chocolate. This is my milk chocolate color, flesh O2. Um, so, um, and then she's had two layers of a darker flesh color. This is um, flesh of two with some Mars black, um, some burnt umber. Um, uh, so she's had four flesh layers where she's had only one. And now I'm going to do um, the blue layer. And this is where um, things are different again. They both have a blue layer, but the blues are very different. So my ethnic little one here is getting a layer of what this is called vein blue. So you can see it's a very dark blue green. And with this little one, let's see if I can bring you down a little bit. There we go. I'm going to be painting all over. Um, and then letting her her dry really thoroughly. This is actually, I think, the fourth time I've painted this particular sculpt. 
Uh, and it makes just absolutely gorgeous um, ethnic baby, I think. Um, just beautiful features. And I just love, love the vinyl. I like that it's a little bit darker vinyl so that um, I can build up those layers quite quickly. So you can see I use a smaller flat brush to um, really get in, really have more control than with a bigger flat brush. Um, and I'm going inside the ears and just every nook and cranny. Um, this is a watercolor consistency, um, but it still is quite a dark, a dark color. And you can probably see from the back of the head, which I've already done, um, that it's really, um, so it serves to, um, to add the blue color. Um, but it also serves to darken at the same time as you're doing that, that blue color. So that's basically what you're doing when you're doing an ethnic baby. You're adding, you're darkening them up and you're adding color at the same time. So you're using extremely dark colors. I'm going um, around the lips. I'm not shading in the lips. And now I'm pouncing with a wedge just to blend um, the color so we don't see brush strokes. It's also really important with an ethnic baby, I found that you let them dry really thoroughly before you go and try to handle them or try to put them in your oven to bake. They need to have yeah, so I have a fan over here, which I didn't turn on. Um, I didn't want you to just be hearing that. I just want to make sure I don't get any on the lips there. And now I'm going to take, oh no, ready to go. So I have a little fluffy brush and I'm just going into the creases. They don't want any buildup of paint um, in the places that have a tendency to build up. So inside creases and things, you don't want them to build up. Okay. And there she is. You can see she's a little bit darker. Now I want to take a look at lips here for a minute. Um, a lot of times um, with ethnic babies, I crease more than once. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my dark um, flesh color that I just did and just uh, go around a couple places. I pick up the paint that's in the um, in the lid because it's a little bit thicker. Gosh, it's so quiet. <laughs> I've been listening to um, Wicked in concert lately, and that's been super fun. So a little bit inside the nostrils as well, and. Now I'm just going to put it very carefully over here and let her dry thoroughly. That head dry thoroughly. Ah. Okay. And now I just had to put my finger on her to balance her. Uh, got a little spot on her. Okay. So that was the blue layer for the ethnic baby. Now for our Caucasian baby, this is the shade of blue that we're going to use. So I call this shade Periwinkle, and it is a mid-range thalo blue mixed with a little bit of a mid-range um, purple. So it's this purpley blue. And instead of doing it all over, we're going to do a mottling. So that means we're going to paint on a sponge, just like that. Just get all the paint onto that sponge. And then I'm gonna start with the back of the head and make um, a mottling layer, which um, makes the skin uneven. 
which when you think about, I mean, look at your own skin, you know, your skin is not one shade. And that's what we're going for here is to make this, um, this skin tone not all be the same shade. And you're probably going to think, I can't even see that. Well, I can see it, but it is very, very light and very subtle. Um, blues, you have to be really careful because um, vinyl loves blue for some reason. I wish someone could explain that to me why. So you really have to be careful with your blues um, and go subtle. I'm going to put a little bit of extra around the temples. Okay, and there we go. I can see a little bit of the blue, and that's absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to leave them for a little bit. Now, at the same time, I'm also painting a blue bell by Cassie Brace. This is Bluebell. All the dolls I'm painting right now are like huge. <laughs> this is Bluebell by Cassie Brace. Really cute. Big, a big sculpt, um, kind of like the size of a Saskia. Um, she's a very limited edition. Only 50 of her were made, and I have number 13. Um, and she is undergoing her purple model right now. And there's the purple color. Um, so we're going to model that so I can put all three of these heads in, in my new wave oven at the same time. She's too big to go into the new wave oven, uh, with her limbs. They have to go separately. <gasps> hey, Shelly, how are you doing? I hope you can hear me. I've had problems with uh, people not being able to hear me before. So if you could tell me if you can hear me or not, that would be sweet. <laughs> I've never been able to successfully. Ah, <laughs> I, yeah, you can hear me. I've never been able to successfully do a live stream. There's always been some issue with um, people hearing me. So I grabbed my school computer Shh, we're not supposed to use it for things like this, but I, cause I knew I had, I zoomed and stuff with it and I'm like, okay, I bet you it's going to work. Yay. Yay. So this is blue bell. If you are just tuning in and we're giving her a purple modeling layer. Um, she's going to be a little boy. Cause I don't know this scrunchy up face to me. That seems like one angry little boy. <laughs> so there we go. I don't know if you can see the mottling. It's it's subtle. This is supposed to be under the skin. So we're not going for something that's really, really um, noticeable. This hopefully will not be noticeable once we get all the other layers. <clears throat> so we're still in a very early process with these ones. Ooh, yes, he, see he. <clears throat> and then very chubby limbs, very chubby. Look at those fat rolls. <clears throat> okay. So one of the reasons I wanted to come on um, a live right now is um, to talk about um, Christmas, which I know it's... Um, it seems like it's a long way away, but if you're a custom artist, it is coming up faster than you think. So I really wanted to talk to collectors about Christmas. And there's one thing that I really need to tell collectors about Christmas that most of most artists know right now, but I don't know how well we're communicating this to our, um, our custom customers. So you may have noticed that I don't, I don't know if collectors have noticed or not, but during the pandemic, um, supply chains have been a real issue with a lot of things, not just reborn dolls, um, but a lot of things. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was uh, sculpts uh, because they are mostly manufactured in China. China set, shut down very early. The ports in China shut down. 
And so it was really, um, it was really hard at the beginning, especially the inexpensive sculpts um, to get them. They just, they just ran out. And then a lot of new sculpts that were supposed to come out were delayed. Um, and then after that, it was bodies. I don't know where bodies are manufactured, quite frankly, but that was the next thing. And eyes were something that were very difficult to come by for a while. And those kind of things were starting to um, starting to get back to normal. And then we had the problem with um, polymers. Um, so, for example, I mean, if you've tried to get... Um, like plastic knives, forks, or spoons in, in the store, like for doing camping or something like that, you will absolutely know that right now um, polymers are really an issue. So um, the supplies to make the paints and the mediums that we use are severely impacted by this. In fact, what I've heard is the Genesis factory so Genesis, those are the people who make our paints. See, these are Genesis paints. Those are those people. Um, they've actually shut down, totally shut down their factory. Now for paints, it doesn't matter all that much because um, we really thin out our paints as reborn artists. We are going for a watercolor consistency. So, you know, to make this thing of paint just took the smallest, tiniest amount of paint. So for paint, it's not a big deal. But what, it, uh, what it's a big deal for is mediums. Mediums are like our thinning liquid, like the, uh, our um, thinning liquid, our odorless thinners um, and things like, you know, our thinning medium or our matte sealer, all of those stuff. Okay. There we go. All of that kind of stuff, um, we're not going to get any more. Whatever we have as artists, that's what we got um, to last us until the Genesis factory has said that they're not going to open their doors um, until uh, next year. Um, I've heard January. Um, I've heard later than that. Um, so because of that, whatever we have as artists, that's what we have. And we have our busy season coming up, the Christmas season. Um, so um, that's why I wanted to talk about Christmas now um, and get people thinking about Christmas because um, I don't want to blow all blow through all my um, all my supplies just for the Christmas season, right? So, um, you know, I have to kind of, you know, I want to make sure that I, I have a, a steady income year round. So I don't want to accept so many customs that I literally go through all my supplies. And then in January, I have no more supplies and I can't buy them and I can't make any more dolls. So this year, it's going to be really important if you're a collector and you're looking for a custom doll from anybody, not just me, anybody that you um, get in line and pay your deposit as early as you possibly can. Because I think most artists are going to be like me. Um, we're, we're just going to make sure that, you know, that we have a, a Christmas season that we make dolls for Christmas, but, the, but that we don't go through all of our supplies. Now, like I said, I'm really lucky. I'm just gonna, this is my medium drawer. So this is already stuff I have mixed up. So I have a whole thing. This is a four ounce jar of thinning medium. I have another one of thinning medium. Uh, I have another one of thinning medium. And I have, oops. so I have four, four ounce jars of thinning medium. Because I heard about this really, really early. I got kind of wind of this and I was on the lookout for these big four ounce jars. And I use, thinning medium actually uh, two layers on the baby. So I use, um, I do like a, a, after I wash the kit, I put a layer of this stuff on. So it provides a good uh, place for the paint to stick. And then I use this as my sealer. Um, so that's why I grabbed a ton of it. Um, 
but as much as I mean, this probably looks like a lot to you, but honestly, it's not that much because you use so much of it. It's not like paint where you use very little of it. So that may look like a lot, but it's not really a lot. <clears throat> so, so back to if you are, you know, looking for a custom from me, then you really need to get like on the ball as soon as you can. Um, I start taking layaway on my already made dolls on September 15th for Christmas because I give you 90 days to pay the rest. So if you want to put your down payment on a ready-made doll, like coming up is the time to do it. Um, so for me, um, you have to put down $100. That first $100 is non-refundable. And then you have 90 days to pay the rest. And I don't care how you pay it. Like, I'm not going to bug you about it. Um, if I don't hear from you in a month, I may say, hey, just remember, you've got this custom doll. You've got this much left. You need to pay it off by this date, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not going to require you to pay me weekly or biweekly or monthly. It is totally up to you how you want to do it. Just, just keep in communication with me. Um, I like to have my Christmas customs paid off by December 15th. So that means I'm I'm pretty sure that it's going to get to you by Christmas because I can't control shipping. And last year's shipping was a nightmare. So I'm hoping 10 days before Christmas that you'll be able to get it on time. Um, if you're interested in a custom doll, I always close my customs um, on Halloween. So that's the last time that I accept customs that I guarantee will be ready before Christmas. Now, I do sometimes take customs after that, but I won't guarantee that they'll be ready um, before Christmas. So if you want something guaranteed to be ready before Christmas, I will take the, my customs um, around Halloween time. I am in the U.S. Yes, 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 I am. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about prices. So prices for custom dolls really, really vary because of the customization, right? Um, sculpts cost a wide range of prices, although they've gone up significantly because of um, shipping, uh, shipping prices have gone up a lot. Um, so unfortunately, my prices have gone up with them. Um, and then I, I just get better and better as an artist. And so I charge a little bit more. Um, so the, the price really depends on your level of customization. Typically, um, the cheapest dolls that I make now, and by cheapest dolls, I mean it's an inexpensive kit. It's closed eye, It's got closed eyes, um, and you're looking at painted hair. So something around, um, about like that is going to be around $300, 300 three. 325, 350, somewhere in that range, plus shipping. Um, if you are looking to uh, to upgrade, so you're looking for um, a limited edition kit, or you're looking for glass eyes, which is an upgrade. You're looking for extra heavy weight, or you're looking for rooted hair, those kind of things. Then you're starting to look at the 400s and the 500s, and again, shipping is on top of that. Um, so let's talk. And speaking of custom dolls, I do have some things I want to share with you. So I've got so I've got some things recently that I, that I want to inspire you if you're thinking about um, a custom doll. So first of all, just walking through Target one day, I found this. Look at this blanket. I don't know if you can tell what's on it. Let's see if you can. I don't know. I don't know if you can tell. It's a Harry Potter blanket. I would love to do another Harry Potter. I've already done one Harry Potter um, and he was so much fun. I wish I would have been able to find this blanket, um, but it's got um, letters all over the place. It's got owls. It's got a Hogwarts in gray. I think this would be so adorable for a Harry Potter baby. And it's, it's super soft muslin and it's huge. So Harry Potter baby, anyone? Speaking of fantasy babies, I also was able to snag um, a couple of um, discontinued kits. So if you are, if you love fairies, uh, your ship has come in. 
So these are two Bountiful Baby Fairy Kits that are long discontinued. Not really sold out because they weren't limited editions, but they are... Um, but they have been discontinued for quite a long time. So this is Jasper Fairy, the open-eyed fairy. I love how his little ears like fold over a little bit. So if you're looking for a little pixie or a little elf or fairy, um, Jasper makes like a preemie size baby. And this is Clover, Clover? Yeah, Clover. And Clover is the closed-eyed version. And again, same size, like a preemie size with those little folded over ears. I have painted these kits many times, and I'd love to paint them again. And I just grab them because they are so, um, so difficult to find them. Um, so you could have a Harry Potter and little house elf or whatever. Uh, I think that would be so cute. Um yeah, so let me show you. Okay, well, I don't know how this is going to work. It's a very cloudy day today. I don't know if you can tell, but it's not a good day for me to paint. But it's Saturday, and that's the day I have to paint. So let me show you. See if I can show you a little clover. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you can see clover. It might be too dark to see him in there. But this is my little clover as a centaur. And this is a doll that I just made for myself. Um, and I made him as a wild centaur. So he's got a furry body and he's got, ooh, I don't know if you can see his little, his little legs. So he's a centaur. He's got two more legs back there. So that gives you an idea of something that you could have. Um, there's my painting area from the other side. Can you see that? I'm just, I'm bringing my computer around <laughs> as I go. So I do have a lot of dolls on Reborns.com right now. A lot of fantasy dolls. So the fantasy dolls are over here. Mostly the fantasy ones are over here. So I have a Raggedy Ann up there. I have a sold out limited edition fairy up there. I have Elphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West, right in time for our Halloween. Right here is Tia. Oh, I don't know if you can see her very well. I don't know if I'm doing very well at all. This is Tia. I just put her on Reborns.com. Tons of people have favorited her. Um, and then way up there, way up there, oh, whoa, whoa, way, way up there. So we have um, Happy Sage. That's Iris, my little clown baby. And here's some more little friends, boys and girls and all sorts of things. And then way up there at the top, let's see if I can, that's Arabella. I think she would make, that's actually the Aaron by Linda Shearer. I think she would make a gorgeous elf. And that's one of the things that I have kind of a goal that I've set for myself is I really want to, I've had a couple people ask me and I've turned them down and I really want to learn the skill of sculpting, not sculpting a whole baby, mm -mm. but just adding sculptural elements like sculpting ears or sculpting a Grinch nose or doing like an avatar baby. So that's one of my goals. So I've actually grabbed all these different shades of clay right here. And my goal is to try to teach myself how to do that. So I have some, um, I have a head, this little tiny head that I use um, for just all sorts of things I use it and abuse it. And I just test out all these different techniques. And so I really wanna test out um, some techniques. And then I also have this head, which I know isn't a human head, but it's a head and it's, you know, it's going to help me with, you know, things like ears or whatever. So that's one of my goals is I want to get to the point that I can do some sculptural things like, you know, there's just so many possibilities. And I think that's kind of 
where like the next uh, the next thing that's gonna lead me to the next thing um especially since i love to do the fan to do the fantasy babies so much yes i do realistic babies but i also love fantasy babies and that's why i got into painting was i didn't like the fantasy ones that were out there and so i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna make my own but wisely um my mentor artist said, you know, you really need to paint realistic babies before you start messing with the color palette and do um, and do the the fantasy babies. And she was totally right. Um, and I learned to enjoy making fan make re making realistic babies as much as I like fantasy babies. All right, so I'm gonna step away for just a second. And uh, I don't have my new wave oven in this room just because of the fumes and stuff. So I'm going to take my stuff to the kitchen, which is where I keep my new wave oven. And I am going to put stuff in the oven and I will be back. So if you have any questions, you could. this is a good time to type them into the comments. Um, whether you're a collector and have questions about collecting reborn dolls. I love educating people about reborn dolls. I really, really do. And unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation out there about them. Um, and there's a lot of pitfalls. Um, and so I would love to share my experience as a collector of 10 years and kind of the things I look for and maybe what some terminology means. And I'm also an artist. So if you have any questions about the art of reborning, um, I would love to answer those questions as well. So I will be back in two shakes of a little lamb's tail. Bye. All right, I'm singing the wizard and I from from Wicked. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about our next layer while we're waiting for that to bake. So I've got <clears throat> all right. So for our Caucasian baby. This is gonna be our next layer, purple, this light purple layer. And for our ethnic baby, it's going to be this. This is called eyelid purple, and it's a very red purple. Um, so you can see the differences in the tone. Oh, I think you can see the differences in the tone between a Caucasian and an ethnic. <gasps> Whoa, Gina's baby world of reborns. Hello. Should I be afraid of toxic fumes when heating the vinyl? I want to try reboarding, but I'm a little afraid of that aspect. Um, from what I've heard from, from people, the, the fumes that are let off, um, it's one of those things that most people develop a sensitivity to over time. So people that I know that have developed that sensitivities are like professional artists that paint a lot of babies and they have the oven right in the room with them. And so it doesn't usually happen overnight, doesn't happen quickly, but over time, that's what happens. <clears throat> so it's always recommended that you um, 
put your new wave oven in a place that's well ventilated. I put it in my kitchen because I've got ceiling fans in my kitchen that um, circulate the air. Some people are cautious, are so cautious they'll like put it outside or in a garage. Um, I don't feel like I need to be that cautious because it doesn't bother me. Um, but that's def definitely something to think about um, if you have a garage or, you know, you want, just want to have an area where it's well ventilated. <coughs> um, honestly, if you're really worried about it, you can also start by using air dry, air dry paints. Air dry paints have come a long way. Um, it used to be that it was Genesis or nothing. And um, it's, it's just gotten so much better. And I started with air dry paints and I am really glad that I did. <clears throat> I learned a lot. Um, and when I transitioned to Genesis, it was extremely easy. Um, because the colors are basically the same. So people know in the air dry community, they have to mirror Genesis because Genesis is, is like the gold standard. Um, and so it was, sometimes the names were different, but I just had to match up the colors and it was great. Um, and I loved it, the fact that, so with air dry paint, you're always fighting time. Like even if you add, you can add certain mediums to make it so that they stay open longer and they stay liquid longer, but it's still, you still have to work pretty quickly. So I love the fact with Genesis that I can work it and work it and work it and I can erase it and do it again. And um, I have all the time in the world um, until I bake it. <coughs> you are welcome. <laughs> I like to be helpful. I find sometimes that in the reborn world, people are just not helpful. Artists are not helpful sometimes because they, you know, they want to keep it secret the way they paint and what they do. And I understand why they do that. Um, some of them, you know, they want to charge you money because, you know, they want to make some money off of that. I understand that too. Um, but I, I did not become a reborn artist to make money. Um, it's great that I do. Um, and honestly, as a reborn artist, I make about the same amount of money a month as I do as a teacher, which is pretty sad. Um, but I would, I'm not, I'm not in it for that, for that reason. Um, I was, I was in it because I was a collector first and I wanted to collect certain dolls and people just weren't making them. Like I'm obsessed with the wizard of Oz obsessed. Um, so I wanted a scarecrow and I wanted a tin man and I wanted a cowardly lion and no one was making them. Um, I wanted fantasy creatures like centaurs and fawns and nobody was making them at the time. Remember, this was like six or seven years ago. Um, and so that's how I got started as a reborn artist because I was a collector first and I wanted to make my own. When I got to the point that, you know, I felt like, oh, well, I could make them for other people. Then, you know, that's great. It, that's a great feeling too. But because of my, I've always just felt that that reborn dolls can be overpriced. Now, again, I am not begrudging an artist. If you can get a thousand dollars for a doll, congratulations, you go girl. But I just think that that is crazy for most people to even consider a doll at that price point. So um, I price my dolls very, very carefully. Um, and, um, you know, I price them very, very reasonably. Um, and I do a lot of research before I price it all. So <clears throat> yes, I agree, Gianna, that it's it's wonderful when they put up tutorials. The big problem with tutorials though is that you can never really you can never really see what's going on as good as the tutorials are because you have to have such good lighting in order to see what's going on that it's gonna wash out all the color. So honestly, it's really best if you can meet with an artist um, in person. Um, I've actually taught two girls around 10 years old how to paint and their dolls came out beautiful. One of them, um, she entered it in her county fair and she won um, a purple ribbon, which means she goes to the state level with her doll. So you know, it's so nice to have an artist side by side. So I've learned at the Rose Doll Show, like I said, I had a mentor artist um, and that's really, really helpful um, if you can learn that way. But I realize not everybody can. And, you know, if you try to contact artists, again, not all artists are going to be nice about it. 
Yes, Gianna, you're right. The The resale market for dolls is not strong. Um, and I think that's because when you fall in love with a doll, it's just, it's such a, it's such a personal kind of a relationship. It's just, it's exactly your thing. And who knows if it's, if it's exactly somebody else's thing. Um, so yeah, reborn dolls is not something that you can, um, it's, it's not a good investment. Let's put it that way. If you're trying to invest in, in dolls and you have, you know, a huge doll collection and you think, oh, well, when I retire and I need money, I'm going to sell these dolls for thousands. No, it doesn't work that way. I wish it did. That'd be cool. It, it should. I mean, these are individual artist creations. They're not factory made and it should. Um, but I've even, uh, purchased dolls. I once had a doll in my collection that was made by the famous Bean Shanine of Twisted Beanstalk Nursery. And I love that doll for the longest time, but but I needed to make room in my collection. And I thought, surely her work is so well known. Like, surely that doll is going to sell for somewhere near the price I paid for it. Nope. So it doesn't matter if it's a major name or not. Hey. Like a thousand tutorials. <laughs> Right, exactly. It does take some effort and some work. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, you know, if it were easy, everybody would do it, right? That's that's the that's the thing. And everybody has a different style of painting. Um I've been really interested lately. Some really good videos I could recommend for you, Gianna, are St. Cloud Nursery. Gina Gabriel. I'm not sure if she goes, if she's St. Cloud Nursery on YouTube or Gina Gabriel. Um, but she is, her tutorials are really amazing. And her painting is really amazing. If you have been watching my channel, you'll know that, oh, I gotta be very careful here. <laughs> you'll know that I snagged her fairy just recently to add to my collection. So this is, she took the Priscilla Realborn and painted her. And she is the most amazing baby in person. I love this sculpt anyway. I've painted this sculpt. I love her hands. I especially love this hand right here. That is my favorite hand. It looks like she's almost casting a spell, I think. And Gina has hand sculpted her ears and I love her freckles. I just adore those freckles. And I love how she rooted her, um, she did a combi hair on her. So this is what I'm trying to learn how to do right here. I wish there were more videos on that. Gina says she's gonna put one up and I'm waiting with bated breath, Gina. I really am. <laughs> but she is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, you do have to watch a lot of videos. Custom Doll Baby is also one I would recommend. Um, again, her videos are very close up um, and very detailed. Um, I'm trying to think of who else I really like. Um, I like Jackie Ortiz. Um, but she, like... You have to really read between the lines with her. Like she's not gonna tell you step by step, um, but you can at least see her painting process. It's really quite clear. And I learned a lot about ethnic babies, but I, she's definitely not a step by step kind of. She's what I call an intuitive painter. So she's just extremely talented and has a very difficult time like explaining that process to other people. But it's just cool to watch her paint. Um, <clears throat> And let's see who I'm trying to think of who else I really, really like. That's the only ones I can think of for the moment. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of any. All right. So I just heard my new wave oven go off. So I'm going to grab my head so we can go on to the next part of the painting process, but how long has this video been going on? Seriously, like, can I even tell that? Oh my gosh, it's almost gone on for an hour. That's insane. That's crazy. I can't believe I've had that much to say. <laughs> I usually, like I said, usually I'm listening to Wicked 
or some other musical um, as I paint. And I don't have much to say or talk about. But this time I did kind of. All right, so I actually think I was going to keep painting, but I think I am going to call it right here. Thank you if you can. Hey, good. It's good to see you. See you. But not in person, but see you through virtually. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, thanks for tuning in with uh, painting our two cuddle heads today. Maybe I'll do some more videos with those cuddle heads if you want to write something into the comments if you're interested in that. And, um, yeah, just to see the difference as we go through the Caucasian layers and then go through the ethnic layers and sort of see what they do. <gasps> Thanks, Gianna. And thank you all for tuning in today. TTFN, ta-ta, for now.